subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law. Hello and welcome. I'm Neha Rati, advocate on record at the Supreme Court. On 25th June 1975, 45 years back, emergency was declared in the country, leading to what is known as one of the darkest chapters in Indian history. Today, I, I have here with me uh, senior lawyer Shanti Bhushan, who has also been the former law minister of the country. He has played a pivotal role in the emergency era, and he's here to tell us more about it. Hello and welcome to the show, sir. Uh, sir, why is Mrs. Gandhi's case regarded as the cause of the emergency of 1975? Well, it is crystal clear that after Mrs. Gandhi lost the election in the High Court and her election was set aside and she was also debarred from contesting any election for the next six years, there was no option for her. It was crystal clear that the High Court judgment on the merits would be upheld by the Supreme Court unless they did something and therefore declared the emergency, suspended the fundamental rights so that an act, they could enact some laws which they could not have enacted when the emergency was not there. And sir, so how did the High Court judgment affect? High Court judgment not only set aside her election, but also debarred her for six years. Therefore, this affected her. Her politics came to an end unless she could get the High Court judgment reversed. And there was no chance of getting it reversed by the Supreme Court of the merits because it was perfectly correct on every point. And that is why they needed the emergency to make some laws with retrospective effect, which would take away the effect of that judgment. So the Supreme Court conditionally stayed the High Court order. Yes. Could you please elaborate on that? Justice Krishna here, when the stay application came up before him, so he heard the arguments at great length. Palki Wali appeared for Mrs. Gandhi. I appeared for Raj Narayan. It was argued at some length and finally he reserved judgment. Next day he delivered judgment and refused to grant an unconditional stay to Mrs. Gandhi, but granted a conditional stay saying that she could continue as Prime Minister, but she could neither exercise her vote nor draw salary as an MP. This was a crippling blow because a Prime Minister's wings had been clipped. It was a Prime Minister with the shortened powers which affected her entire reputation and therefore she had to intervene, declare the emergency because there was a great demand by Jay Prakash Narayan and the opposition parties for a resignation when an absolute stay order had been refused and they had convened a big meeting and that is why Mrs. Gandhi felt that there was no option except to declare an emergency. Were you surprised with the declaration of emergency? Yes. And I, did you expect her to react to I this did way? not expect her to react in this way. What was your uh, immediate... Uh, I thought that Mrs. Gandhi, having been born in a democratic family, having been brought up in democratic traditions, would continue to accept the democratic traditions and would step down. And if she had stepped down and started working for the people, maybe later on the people would have forgiven her and brought her back. But she adopted the other method, namely she not, did not want to give up office because she felt if once she was out of office, perhaps Babu Dev Ji Madam, who had a great clout to the inheritance of the country, would prevent her from coming back to power. So, sir, 
So, and how did the Supreme Court finally decide the case? Finally, the Supreme Court, on the basis of the retrospective amendments to the election law, those amendments, which if they had been there at that time, then the election could not have been set aside. So these retrospective amendments to the election law were upheld by the Supreme Court, although in my opinion, it was totally wrong. And do you think the judges were influenced by the emergency? Of course, the emergency under which great people like Jay Prakash Nara and Urati Desai and the tallest political leaders of the country had been put in jail. After all, judges of the Supreme Court are also human beings. How, did, how could they convince themselves that if they did not please Mrs. Gandhi, they, she might also put them in jail and visa. Therefore, the fear was very much there. And it was on account of that fear that, in my opinion, that judgment upholding retrospective amendments to election law in the next election, I campaigned on this ground. What is this kind of a match? A match is played according to the rules which are laid down before the match. After the match is over and one team wins, how could the rules be amended so that to make the other, other team win? So uh, what about the habeas corpus case? Uh, how did you come about to argue that? You see, during emergency, so many people have been detained. So on their behalf, a habeas corpus petition in various high courts were filed in which the government raised a preliminary objection that on account of the suspension of fundamental rights, no habeas corpus petition could be entertained. Nine high courts decided against the government on this preliminary issue and said habeas corpus does not depend upon fundamental right. There is a natural right of liberty which existed even before the constitution and so habeas corpus would be maintained. The government appealed against those nine governments to the Supreme Court. Proceedings were stayed by the Supreme Court in all the nine high courts and the Supreme Court by a majority judgment of four to one reversed that judgment in which Justice H.R. Khanna gave a dissenting judgment which he and he became a national hero. Everybody remembers him. Yeah. Of the <laughs> so do you think the other judges were under some kind of fear when they decided the case? Judges? The other judges. Of the course Supreme judges Court. were under fear. Because if Mur Murarji Desai and Charan Singh and the tallest other leaders including Jai Prakash Narayan could be jailed during the emergency, in which all the newspapers could be banned. Then in that case, how could the judges not feel that anything could be done to them also? I mean, why do you think the high courts did not buckle while the Supreme Court... You see, the so? pressure on the high court is not that much, because their order is always subject to appeal to the Supreme Court. Right. But since the Supreme Court verdict is final, the pressure of the government, the pressure of the emergency is entirely on the Supreme Court. In the current times, do you think the Supreme Court is more independent now than at the time of no. the emergency? No, it is not. It is as unindependent as it was during the emergency because the present government under the leadership of Modi has taken a steps by which all kinds of pressures have been put on the judges, temptations have been created in their favor. All the institutional independence of every institution has been destroyed. And therefore, although there is no declared emergency, but all the institutions which provide checks and balances, their independence has been taken away. What do you think the future to be at the Supreme Court, the young lawyers and the other? See, 
after the emergency when Mrs. Gandhi lost the election and I became law minister. At that time, he brought in the 44th Constitutional Amendment, which contained an express provision that even during emergency, fundamental rights under Article 19 and 21 could not be suspended. So even after declaration of emergency, the present government cannot suspend those rights and therefore cannot play against the rights of the people. And this is a big restraint on the government imposed by the 44th Amendment. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for taking out the time for live law. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from live law.